having an emergency? Evacuation! All right, we're evacuating. Hey guys, welcome back to Honeyco. My name is Keo. This is Opening Act. And I want to say thank you to all those who watched our last video. A lot of people enjoyed it and we have a lot of new subscribers, which means we're coming up on our 1,000 subscriber mark. So please do invite your friends to join. And remember, we are doing a giveaway. So do remember to leave your Instagram handle in the comments below and follow along on Instagram at Honeyco Manila, at Keo Kosho, and at Ajimamag to be able to participate in that giveaway. And subscribe if you can, that helps us and goes a long way. Today, we're gonna be talking about Air Max 90s, but before we do that, I wanna take maybe just two minutes to talk about a couple of things that came in the mail over the last few days. And uh, up first, we have this bag that came, so it's made out of cassava, which is, um, is that a form of sweet potato? And we got this from a company called TriArt. So TriArt is, a new company that I believe is run by a friend of Honeycomb, Nares. So shout out to Nares. Nares was actually part of our um, streetwear panel during Pop Expo, one of the events that we put together um, in Honeycomb community. So we have this pop cultural event called Pop Expo that we do with Warner Media. And uh, on our third year, which is the most recent one pre pandemic, we had a panel about streetwear and Narius was there, but he wasn't there as a streetwear proprietor yet at the time. So it's interesting to see him come in. You know, he was, he was talking about the, you know, the role of streetwear and fashion in music. So it's interesting to see him make moves into this field and see such success recently. And I wanted to open this up on camera because it's my first time to see a shirt from TriArt. Oh, that's cool, look at that. That's so interesting. My first time to see a TriArt t-shirt, and uh, this is actually not mine, this is my wife Nika's. Uh, we both like the same design and we decided that she could be the one to get it. On the front it says, grow and evolve. Wow, look how, look how big this print is. Wow. And then uh, over here at the bottom, you have the name of the artist, which is Cursed Gift. I believe it's Curse slash Gift. And then over here, you have this flower pattern that runs along the sleeves as well. Full print on both sleeves. It's extra small because it's my wife, Nika. She's like five feet tall. And yeah, is there a print on the back? No print on the back. So that is the Cursed Gift grow and evolve shirt from TriArt. It's interesting, TriArt's doing something really special where they're making all of their own everything. They're making their own blanks and then they kind of have this, this Kickstarter system where artists, you know, make kind of mock-ups or they make designs for the shirts and then a certain number of shirts need to be sold uh, before they make the shirts and then if they make more than those or if they sell more than those in the pre-selling period, uh, kind of like Travis Scott does, then they will just print more shirts and then once it's done, it's done. Um, I haven't heard if they were going to do any re-releases ever again, but yeah, it's really interesting to go look at their website and see what artists are involved, especially that they, they are making their own shirts um, and it's not like a Gild and Blank, which is what most t-shirts, streetwear brands are. And I think most impressed by the number of colors that they managed to do on this shirt, how flush the designs are. This is pretty clean, really nice and clean. And then you got the try art tab here on the bottom hem. All right, so that is the Grow and Evolve t-shirt made by, designed by Curse Gift and produced by Try Art. So do look up Try Art and it's good to follow them on Instagram so that you can kind of keep up to date with all the new stuff that they have coming out because they are coming out with new artists all the time. And, uh, and because of that limited run nature, you want to get in. You want to get in while they're making it. All right, up next we have a couple of things that came in from Kinto. First mug is, uh, oh, they're like diner mug style. I forget what this is called. I think this is called the Diner Mug. The second one is not the same. They sent two different colors. And this first one, this gray one says, if you move slowly, so do the clouds. Very much in theme with the concept of 
Kento, which is to do all slow coffee. On this other cup, the white one, there's a drawing of a car and then it reads around and it says, slower than the car, a little faster than walking. And then there's a guy on a bike. <laughs> so it's about cycling. Uh, maybe it's the kind of thing that the Esteban uh, street cycling guys would be interested in. All right, these look like 200 something, 250 ml cups. Um, but if you know the capacity of the cup, then you can do a pour over right into the cup and fill it up all the way. This being a 250 ml cup, I think the ideal amount of coffee for this would be about 15 grams of coffee. And then you pour over 225 milliliters of water and then you'll end up with about 190 in the cup, which is perfect for a 250 ml cup because that leaves space below the rim. It won't spill. And if you want to put in sugar or milk, I don't know why you'd want to do that. But if you wanted to do that, you could. Um, unlike this other stuff that, that Kento sends us, these are actually a gift. So thank you to Kento. The other stuff we generally speak and we send back um, as review units. All right. So let's get into the meat of the discussion. I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about Air Max 90s. Having an emergency. Evacuation. Yep. All right, we're evacuating. Hi guys. So today is two days later. Uh, what you heard just then was the emergency evacuation for the building that we're in. Um, there was an alarm that was triggered and we don't differentiate in this building if it's a fire alarm or an earthquake alarm, whatever. Um, there's just an evacuation alarm that sounds. So the evacuation alarm sounded and uh, we packed up the space and got everyone out to safety. Uh, luckily, it was a false alarm and that's actually what you want in these situations. So yeah, and then, so that was two days ago. Yesterday was a holiday. So today we're getting back into the studio and we're gonna finish a video today. I'm gonna start and just jump right into talking about these Air Max 90s. Now this is the grape and you might remember that I unboxed this uh, a couple of months back. We got this on sale, but the retail price for this is 6,000 something, like 6,200, 6,400 pesos. And this is the recrafted Air Max 90. 2020 was the 30th year of Air Max 90 you know, 90 being 1990. And uh, so they decided to kind of remaster the sneaker and bring it back to its kind of OG roots and use the OG color blocking with some new colors. Part of that first batch that they brought out with the same color blocking, the black mud guard section and the same materials on the upper. Um, and then this is one that we picked up on nike.com on sale. And this, uh, this also retailed for about 6,000, but on discount, it cost 1,800 pesos, which is a, you know, under $50, great price. Uh, actually under $40, great price for an Air Max 90. In the white slash white hyper orange colorway. So this is all hyper orange. And to be honest, when this showed up on the Nike website, it showed up on the sale. I was quite concerned that maybe it wouldn't be nice. Uh, one, because the price was kind of unbelievable. It was 1,800 pesos. Um, but also because the picture on the website didn't really communicate the images, uh, communicate the colors really well. It had a name like hyper orange. And on the website, it kind of looked like this darker rust orange it was strange and then i thought that this you know the, the gray didn't come out the same and when they showed up in the mail the colors just came out so nice and so clean and really really 90s honestly like in terms of the styling almost as much as the purple was now what i want to do now is talk about the ways that this sneaker and that sneaker are the same because we got them at such different prices. The materials on the tongue, it's got this nice nylon, which is a very retro touch, and it's exactly the same here on the, on the grape colorway. Uh, I was concerned sometimes meshes are different. There's some that are tighter, some that are looser, and I thought that the grape 
had a really perfect mesh. Look at that nice, tight, clean mesh. And then over here, the Hyper Orange actually has exactly the same tight mesh classic. Uh, Shape-wise, they are identical. On the inside, the insole is also identical. They both have this insole with the Easter egg, which is the Air Max 1 outsole embossed onto the insole of the, of the sneaker. And then here's where they start to be different. First, uh, when they arrive in the mail, they are different. The box of the Hyper Orange is this Nike sportswear retro box and then the Hyper Grape and all of the ones kind of in this, this first batch of recrafted uh, Air Max 90s come in this, which is tighter. And I like this box because it's true to the OG. This is the retro box. Um, but if you watch the unboxing of this, the thing I didn't like about it is that the sneakers really are squished in there. And if I try to put them back, it's actually a hard thing to do. Um, so I, I do like the bigger box. I just like the style of the old box. Now materials start to change at this point. Where they start to really get different is when you get to this section here, which is the upper paneling, where on the uh, kind of on the first batch of retros, true to the OG, they use a synthetic suede. And then over here on the Hyper Orange, it's using a synthetic leather. Now, all of the materials on these Air Max 90s are synthetic. And we do get some premium Air Max 90s where they use real leathers or they use, you know, more premium leathers. Uh, but if you're talking about a true to the OG retro, it's gonna be synthetic and you want it to be synthetic because that is kind of the 90s look. Um, but if you look at how the panels are cut and the, the things that they had done to recraft and remaster these sneakers, they are identical. The swoosh on the Hyper Orange is in that synthetic felt. Color blocking is still the same though, where uh, when we talk about color blocking, what we're talking about is where the colors change and kind of the pattern, how they differentiate. Here, you see that the swoosh and this panel is both white or they're both white. And then here they're both gray, so they're the same. On the upper eye stay here, it's gray here and gray here. Over here it's black here and black here. And then purple, purple, orange, orange. So they're pretty much the same in that respect. Uh, the only section that I can see on this sneaker where the color blocking really differs is on the back tab. Now, the, they both do have that nice two-tone back tab, but on the Hyper Grape and all of the original, it's black to match this mudguard. And then the main color is the, the color of the badge. Whereas on the Hyper Orange, they use the color of the mudguard on that Nike Air badge on the heel. And then painted white is the, the logo lockout. The last place that you have a difference is on the lining on the older, Air Max 90, it has this like towel-like, this kind of Sherpa finish. And then on the Hyper Orange, it uses a mesh, more like an athletic shoe finish. It's not bad, I'm not mad at it, uh, but yeah, it, it's not the same. It's just a little bit different. Now, if you're talking about which sneaker do I prefer, um, neither one. I think that they're both really nice and they're both very, very 90s. I think that this color blocking is a lot more like European, Asian 90s, um, whereas this is kind of very much a US kind of styling. It's, if it's a question of, are you getting a inferior shoe if you're paying less for an Air Max 90 or why is it on sale? I think that it was only on sale because of the, um, because of the photo really, like there were tons of sizes in this colorway, in this hyper orange colorway. And I think it was just because the, the photo didn't communicate just how 90s it was, just how retro it was. And I'm really digging it. Oh, another feature that's different is that on the originals, you have these white lace tips, whereas on the hyper orange, you get this nice orange lace tip. Um, and then on the, on all of these retros from the Air Max 90 recrafted, you get the arch pillows, anatomical arch ports, and then on the Hyper Orange, they don't come with them. 
Um, right now I'm wearing the Air Max Tri-X 97 and I actually use the arch supports inside of these. So just in case you wanted to know what it looks like, that's what it looks like when you stick the arch support inside of your Air Max Retro. Uh, back then, this was really how they, how they did it. Um, you would get arch supports in your sneaker kind of to cater to like the different kinds of feet and the different kinds of runners um, that these shoes were designed for. Nowadays, they make completely different models, completely different SKUs for the different kinds of runners. Now the question is, how do they differ from another model that is now actually on sale again on the Nike Philippines website, which is the Air Max 3. So the Air Max 90 is the retro of the Air Max 3. The Air Max 3 was the original name for the Air Max 90. And then when they retroed them, they used the 90 name to remind us, I guess, that it came out in 1990, but they are technologically slightly different. Um, some, of the, some of the rubber on the outsole that wraps up is a different shape. And then the Air Max 3 actually has another airbag in the toe. Um, and then there's some printing differences in terms of the sizing. So what Nike did was in 2020, they retroed all three of the original colorways of the Air Max 3, and they named them the Air Max 3. And they're actually quite difficult to get. Uh, here in Asia, I think you have to win a raffle to be able to get the infrared color, uh, which they actually um, renamed, or they named it back to its original name, which was something else red. Um, what was the original name of the infrared Air Max 3? According to GQ, first retroed in 2005, the original infrared colorway has seen re-releases in 2008, 2010, and 2015. That was not helpful at all. Oh, but here, uh, Radiant Red. So they changed the name to Radiant Red for the you know, for the retro of the Air Max 3. So they had the radiant red, there was a blue one, and then now there's like this turquoise and yellow one, which was the Asia and uh, Asia and European release, the international release, and they actually call out, it says international on the insole of that one. And that was the OG one for here. All right, so have you picked up a pair of Air Max 90s? How little have you paid for an Air Max 90? Uh, this is a little. This is a, the lowest price Air Max 90 I've ever seen, 1,800, and they look great. Like it really makes me wonder why people buy fake sneakers when you can get such a great deal directly from Nike for something like this. All right. Let me know your Air Max 90 stories. I'd love to hear them. Follow along on Instagram. My name is at Kosha on Instagram. Follow at Honeycomb Manila on Instagram. That's our studio here in Double Dragon Plaza where we run this uh, co-working space. And uh, follow Adjima Mag on Instagram as well. All right, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, you've gotten this far in the video, you might as well subscribe. The button is here to subscribe. The original Air Max 90 video will be up here. Plot Air Jordan 14, we'll put that here. And then maybe another one over here about coffee. All right, wish you guys good luck, wish you guys good health. Peace.